parishioners and visitors on the 28th Sunday in ordinary time. Our lives will be transformed by God's generous love as we are invited to live forever with the Lord. Let us pray that our response may be as generous as the invitation we have received. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples the feast of rich food, the feast of well aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well aged wines strained clay. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the dead, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord 
was pressed on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Shepherd, I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I shall not walk. He leads me in the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. My God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Those slaves went out into the streets 
and had gathered to all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On August 6, 1945, a B-29 aircraft dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. The bomb exploded one kilometer from the Jesuit church of Our Lady Assumption. More than 100,000 people were killed instantly, and thousands more died a month later from the effects of radiation. However, the church building and the eight Jesuit priests living in Paris survived. In the flood of fire and pain, however, God left a sign of His presence and power. God suspended the laws of physics. In the first zone of total destruction and ruins within a two kilometers radius of the blast site, only one house was left. It was inhabited by a small community of eight Jesuits and four others involved in evangelization. The religious house was just over a thousand meters away from the center of the explosion and eight blocks. At the time of the explosion, there were only four priests in the monastery, in the house. It is astonishing that neither the deadly temperature resulting from the explosion, which melted everything nearby, nor the force of the blast destroying what was encountered, nor even the radiation had any effect on the later health and life of the Jesuits. Investigation the entire incident later, physics at the US Department of Defense conclude that the Jesuit headquarters should have been destroyed beyond reasonable doubt. Under such conditions, it is not possible for anyone to survive. No one at this distance should stay alive. <clears throat> On the morning of August 6, 1945, Father Hubert Schiffer had just finished Mass, went into the rectory and sat down at the breakfast table. He had just sliced a grapefruit and put his spoon into the grapefruit when there was a bright flash of light. He first thought was that it was an explosion in the harbor. Then, in the words of Father Schiffer, Suddenly, a terrific explosion filled an air with one bursting thunderstroke. An invisible force lifted me from the chair, hurled me through the air, shocked me, battered me, wheeled me round and round like a leaf in a gust of autumn wind. The next thing he remembered, he opened eyes and he was laying on the ground. After a while, the other monks came out of their rooms. Next to their house, there was also 
also an untouchable congruent character with tomatoes and other vegetables and grape bushes. Nothing had been destroyed. Not a single tile fell from the roof. Even the grass was the same. It was incomprehensible that all the inhabitants of the house, four monks present at the place, and the other eight absent household members, who were for various reasons in the other parts of Hiroshima at the time of the explosion, survived the explosion. Everyone continued to live safely, enjoying good health for many years. The question arises, how could the missionaries survive the atomic explosion that killed everyone else within two kilometers of the epicenter of blast? In the suburbs of Hiroshima, there was a second Jesuit house. There was a novitiate in it. This house was also untouched, although around it the shock wave causes considerable destruction. When the bomb went off, there were 18 priests and novices, future priests, in the house. They all survived and immediately began to provide assistance to the victims. Three days later, another atomic bomb came down on Nagasaki. Also in this city was a house in which all the inhabitants were praying the rosary. The house, built by St. Maximilian Kolbe, was inhabited by Polish Franciscans. I don't think I have to add that all the monks miraculously survived. After the war, the Americans' army doctors and scientists explained to the priests that their bodies would begin to deteriorate. So deteriorate, that's how they did. Because of the radiation. The diagnosis never materializes. They were examined by dozens of doctors, some 200 times over the course of the following years, without any trace of the radiation being found in their bodies. When asked why, nothing happened to them, Father Schiffer and the other survivors had one answer. Our house was different from the others only in one way. In our house, we listened to the many calls of Our Lady to pray the Rosary every day. We were safe thanks to Mary, to whom we entrusted ourselves every day. We believe that we survived because we were living the message of Fatima. We lived and prayed the Rosary daily in that house. At the end of the First World War in Portugal, in Fatima, Mary, Mary revealed the end of the war and encourage the practice of daily prayer of the Rosary. 
divisions lasted from May 13 to October 13, 1917. It was there that Mary introduced herself as the Queen of the Rosary. And on the last day of the vision, there was an extraordinary event. This event has been called the miracle of the sun, but it will be the subject of another sermon. Monday is Thanksgiving Day. In a circle of our family, we will and eat together. We rediscover the treasury that is our family, our home. We are also aware of how easy it is to lose it. We know that we live in peaceful times, that no atomic bomb threatened us. But let us think for a moment. Are you really sure that no cataclysm will threaten your family, your marriage? Even if today you are a happy married couple and happy parents, are you sure that it will be like that in 10 or 20 years? We live in a world where traditional values such as faith, family, motherhood, love are rapidly eroding. Mass media is changing the world extremely quickly. That is why we are forced to face all risk. We need help and we have this help in our hands and in our hearts, which is the Rosary. This simple prayer is able to change our lives and the lives of our children. These are not my words, but the words of Mary said in Fatima in 1917. There will be an opportunity to pray one decade of rosary before the Blessed Sacrament after Mass today. church, the conscience of her many gifts of God, she will seek to serve all people in a spirit of gratitude. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For new vocations for priesthood and religious life, especially in our diocese, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our world, that wealthy nations will share from their abundance with those regions most in need, particularly Africa. 
Africa and areas of the Middle East. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our For all who suffer from disease or illness, that they will receive support and comfort from a caring and loving community. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our For our parish family, that we will be generous in sharing our own blessings with others. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, that they may enter into the loving presence of God. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty Father, hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, with prayers of your faithful, with the sacrificial offerings, that through this act of devotedness we may pass over the glory of heaven to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us thanks to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us when we do in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake in the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Hector our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the Supper of the Lamb.
the blood of Christ. Amen. Spiritual prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul, since I cannot now 
vestido do sacramento ali. Come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I remember and reverence you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. First, glorious mystery, resurrection. Do not be terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold the place where we laid him. Our Father, who art in heaven, Blessed art of the woman, and blessed is the fruit of my womb, 
Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have praised the Lord, you blessed heart of the woman, blessed the good word of Jesus. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, let us pray. Lord Jesus, you give us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you want for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ through God and through man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Holy Spirit the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most dear spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God. 